welcome back to another C Designs woodworking video. In today's video, I will be creating this poker chip cabinet that a coworker of mine asked if I could build. Started off the build by headed to the local hardware store to pick up some maple plywood. Start out with a three quarter sheet and a half inch sheet of the maple plywood. Now I'm relatively new to the custom furniture woodworking side of woodworking, but I'm always up to a new challenge. And this was going to show many challenges as this project went along. So let's get started on this build. Now once you get all your pieces mapped out on the plywood where you're going to make your cuts, then it's time to rip out the trusty track saw and start cutting down the sheet goods. This is always one of the easier ways to cut down sheet goods. And like I've said in previous videos, there's all there's many many different types of track saw systems out there that you can purchase to help make this go a little easier if you don't have a track saw you can always use a skill saw and straighten it up on a table saw later on so the first part of the build that i really wanted to kind of get out of the way was all of the trays for the poker chips themselves I figured this was going to be probably the hardest part of the build. So I got a piece of the quarter inch and a piece of the half inch plywood cut to my sizes and then I started smearing glue around that will join the two pieces together. I basically had to laminate them together and that's what I'm doing here in this clip. And once I got all the glue smeared around then I flipped it over and started clamping everything together. Now, not only did I use clamps on this part of the project, but I also put some weight in the middle of the board because you want the glue to set up properly in the middle of the board. I didn't want these trays coming apart later on down the road. Once the glue had set up, then it was time to take everything off the trays, unclamp everything, hang all the clamps back up and get the shop back in order so we can move on to the next step. Now I thought long and hard and even did a couple of experiments of trying to figure out how I was going to make the grooves for these poker chips. I ended up doing it with the router and an inch and five eighths round over bit. Now for these trays, there were gonna be nine different slots. Each slot I had to do three passes to get to the depth that I wanted it to be. This was probably the most challenging part of this build, I would have to say but the results turned out amazing and it was well worth the time and effort it took to do this. Once the final groove was cut, it was now time to take this one long massive tray and cut individual trays. Six trays in all had to be cut, and this track saw made quick work of getting all six of those trays cut out. The next morning, I trimmed down the width of the trays to their final dimensions. Then it was on to building the carcass of this cabinet. Now I had cut most of these pieces for the carcass down already 
in the beginning as I was waiting for glue to dry. So now it was just a matter of putting everything together and trimming things down to their final dimensions. After drilling in some pocket holes with my Craig pocket hole jig, I then took everything over to the workbench and started lining everything up so I can start assembling it. Now the customer did not have a lot of space for where this cabinet was going. So this cabinet was pretty straightforward. Two sides, a back, and then the drawers in the front. No front face or anything like that. I'll add some wood later on to give it a little bit, bit of dimension. But for the most part, this is a pretty easy build. I wanted everything to be good and sturdy. So not, not only did I use pocket holes, but I also used a little bit of glue just to make sure that everything was going to be held together nice and tight. As you can also see here, I used a clamp just to hold everything tight and flush as I screwed in those pocket hole screws. Not only will this cabinet have six drawers for the poker chips, but it'll also have two regular drawers as well. One small one in the top and one bigger one in the bottom for whatever that mean may need to be associated with the poker chips. Now for these drawer boxes, I just did a simple rabid joint for the edges. And then I also put a quarter inch groove on the bottom to hold the base of the drawer together. And then I just glued all the edges together and secured it with a little pin nail. And then it was time to engineer a bracket for these poker chip trays. <laughs> an engineer. I definitely didn't go to school to become an engineer. But, nevertheless, I had to do it. Once I figured out what my cross pieces need to be, took it over to the miter saw and cut down the pieces. It ended up being 13 and a half inches is what I needed. So right here, I'm sneaking up that, on that line. I keep taking the tape measure and checking my measurement and just taking just a little piece off and we were good. Then once I had all the uh, pieces cut down to the right width, then I just shaved off to the final dimensions the height of each piece of the brackets. Now here I was cutting and shaping two pieces in the bracket that were going to go in the middle. And these were going to be about a quarter inch higher than the rest of it to hold that tray in place. Then I cut a groove on the bottom of each of the trays to correspond with those pieces that I just cut. That's going to keep those trays in their place. Now that I have all my pieces cut and ready to go, it was time to assemble all of these brackets that are going to hold the trays in the drawer. Once I pre-drilled all the holes, I put a little glue on all the end pieces and then assembled the brackets. Now these trays are going to need a little handle on the side so I went over to the router table and put a nice chamfer on each side of these trays. Now for the front and the back of these trays I just used a couple strips of quarter inch maple plywood. Put a little glue on there put the pieces on and then tacked them into place. 
This will help hold the poker chips on the trays so they don't fall out. All right, so at this point in the build, this is where things are starting to come together. And my measurements and what I've envisioned in my head sometimes doesn't always come together quite like you want it. Now, I mean, it's, this has come together. I've got the bracket here that the drawer slides are going to connect to, and the tray sits down on top of it. And then I've got my, my, face, uh, my drawer face right here, but it's so tight that it's hard to get the tray to come out, and this is supposed to come out in my vision not stay in there and so it's hard to get in and out so what do you do to take care of this let me show you so how on earth did i fix this i took some strips of edge banding and i ironed it on the front part of these brackets and this gave me just enough clearance once it was all put together I guess you could say it's some more of that ingenuity that I'm having to come up with as I go along with this project. And now that I've added the edge banding to the front of this bracket here, uh, it allows for about a 64th of an inch to this drawer face so that way this tray will come off and go back in it's just smooth and I don't have it rubbing up against the uh, drawer face and so it'll allow for everything to work a whole lot better and it was just a simple fix of just adding just a little bit so that way there, there's that clearance to this uh, drawer face. Then it was time to break out this beautiful piece of ambrosia maple that I picked up from my local hardwood dealer. Now this piece of wood is going to make up the top of the cabinet and then also the corner pieces of the cabinet. I wanted to give it a little bit of character other than just simple plywood. So this piece of wood is going to bring everything together. I had to start by ripping down some really thin pieces of wood that's going to wrap the corners of this cabinet. I cut everything close on the table saw, then I took it out to my planer. I set my planer to the exact dimensions that I wanted, and then I ran all those strips through that same dimension so that way everything was the same and uniform all the way around the cabinet. In my design, these strips of wood kind of had a two-fold purpose. Not only was it to give the cabinet a little bit of dimension instead of just square sides, but it also was a way to cover up the edge of the plywood so that way it just brought this whole cabinet together and allow for a beautiful finish. Now I didn't want any pinholes in the sides of these corners so I just used glue to secure everything to the corners and just clamped every part of those strips up really well so that way the glue would set up and allow for a good tight bond. And that concludes the first part of this build. As you can see, I have a lot of the pieces put together and ready to go for the final assembly of this cabinet. And then it'll be off for staining and the final clear coat. As always, please like and share our videos. 
and be on the lookout for part two of this video where everything comes together.